thinking I'm next to you day. My name is Tion Lalesio and my artist name is Turquoise Prince. I was born in Canberra, ACT. Life wasn't too hard. I had a single mum. Yeah, my parents got divorced when I was young. I like DVO and shit. Um, so I didn't see my dad for a bit. And yeah, my mum raised me, my younger sister and my older brother. And yeah, we, we didn't have heaps of money. We drove a little ship box. Yeah, a little Ford laser, like a rusty brown Ford laser that I um, didn't want to be seen in, like getting dropped off to school. So I'd tell mum to drop me down the road. School was all right, it was, it was chill. Um, I got bullied a little bit, I think, when I was little. Um, yeah, again, like not having like money, bro. Having a shit car. Um, and kids used to like say like, oh, where'd you get your sandwich from? Vinnie's, <laughs> like Salvo's. And yeah, I used to, um, I actually used to wig out a bit as well. Like kind of just be like, what? Like I'm, I'm being bullied, you know what I mean? And like, I'll tell my older brother, I'll tell my cousins, I'm like, bro, like don't, don't let them bully you, you know? The area I lived in, um, Southside, Woden in ACT. Um, wasn't like a super nice area. And yeah, our, our car used to get stolen from our front yard. <laughs> and um, we'd wake up and it's not there. So we'd like catch a bus to school or walk. Um, sometimes the cops would like call my mum and be like, oh, we found your car at this oval. And there's like tissues with blood or <laughs> like just batteries dead, doors open. And, and shit, um, but yeah, the the area wasn't too wasn't too bad. It's not not like ghetto. So growing up, I definitely um, I definitely hung out with like the street kids, which probably sounds funny, but I went to a private school in high school. But after school, I'd go and hang with the kids from the public schools, um, and I just like. I felt like I belonged more with them, like to the point where I remember sometimes I'd go from my school, I'd bring like a free uniform and I'd get changed on the bus and then I'd bus it to this school called Melrose, which is a renowned public school. And I'd go walk around at lunchtime, like I went there and then I'd get away with it. Like a couple of times I got away with it, just hanging out. And then one time these teachers were like, mate, you don't, you don't go to this school. And I was like, oh, psh. Legged it. I never got in like crazy trouble with the law um, growing up, but all my boys were getting in trouble. You know, like we we do silly things. Um, like after school, I'd bus it to the interchange, Woden interchange, and go meet up with these street kids. Um, and we'd either go to Big W, get like scissors, and and go to this car park and just look for any car that didn't have like a steering wheel lock, like shit boxes, screwdriver, bang, scissors, whatever, and drive stolen cars, drive around. I'll get picked up in stolen cars after school. It was just, yeah, it was funny because yeah, I went to a Catholic school, a private school, but I just like, I just didn't feel like I belonged there and yeah, but you know, I guess we'd be at parties, underage, drinking, drugs, whatever. And then if cops come and shut it down and like chase us, I would like, I'll run and it'd be fun. I'd be like, oh, outrunning the cops. But that was probably like the only real trouble I got in with the law, bro, as a young man. But definitely had friends going to juvie and sort of just like watching them and being like, whoa, like, I'm, I'm lucky that I'm not getting in trouble like that. But at the same time, I kind of like, it was like, I knew that my family would be so disappointed. Like my mum would be like, why, why do you want to 
be like that. Um, so I guess I was just like, I was dabbling in being naughty as a kid, but I never, I never fully committed, if that makes sense. How did you get into music in the first place? So I started music in high school. There was another rapper in Canberra, one, one kid that was rapping and he was really good. But I always just had this weird competitive edge. I was always like, like, bro, I can do that easy because I was always freestyling with my boys. And then word got around, like I, I dropped a song or a couple songs or whatever because I'd wag with my mate. Ani Kundavong, he lived near the school, and we go make beats, and I'd rap, I'd I'd write bars like in the first second period, and then we would go, and then I'd come back at the end of the day with a song, um, and yeah, so he'd, I'd heard that he, this other rapper, like didn't rate me, or was talking shit, some some shit, so I was like, alright, bro. I'm gonna diss this guy. So I wrote a whole diss song about this dude that went to this other school. And then it went around, bro, it went around. And then like, I just remember it was, I just, as I said, wrote it in the morning, recorded it, and then came back to school in the afternoon with a song. Everyone sent it around. This is before iPhones. This is like Bluetooth and infrared. Um, and people would just come up to me, be like, bro, your song, your song, it's crazy. And I'd be like, all right, sick. Next day, I hear like, oh, someone had his response. It was like, yeah, the next day or the day after, he, um, he wrote a song about me, a diss song. So we're dissing each other back and forth. And his was really good, bro. Mine was rubbish. Um, but still I had to I had to respond so I did another song and then I recorded it we made the beats from scratch um and then but see my my song went went probably too far like I was like but I was like dissing his parents dissing his fucking just whatever I'd heard I was like making up shit about him like just just full going like fuck it you know like I'm gonna win even though I was rubbish um, like I definitely was nowhere near the, the lyricist, uh, that he was. And then, so like on the last day, it started on like the Monday, ended on the Friday, he dropped a song, but then he came to my school, but I left my phone in my locker. And one of my boys at his school was like, bro, old mate's coming to your school. Like he's gonna, he's gonna bang on bro. I was like, all right. Well, I didn't know actually. So, but. I was eating lunch, like eating my sandwiches on the basketball court. And then I just remember my mates being like, bro, bro, Metterman's here, Metterman's here. This dude comes to my school and I turn around and he goes for like the headbutt, like grab me, boom. I just push him back, whatever, whatever. We have a little dance. Um, unfortunately for him, he came off second best and there was videos. Um, and so it kind of ended where he was like, like, oh, write a sorry song, write a sorry song. But he rocked up to my school with boys, you know what I mean? Like a car load. Uh, and this is year 10. Um, and then I was just like, nah, I'm not saying sorry, bro. I'm not saying sorry. Um, and so that kind of blew up uh, for its time, you know, that was like viral back before bloody I think we had Facebook, but it wasn't popping. It was like Bebo and shit. Um, but everyone had these songs and the videos of us fighting. And like, it was just like news, you know, big news. So I remember I was walking to this party with my cousin Nico. We were, we were walking, like walking for like an hour to get, cause we didn't drive, whatever. And we came, we were near the party and we heard this, this song, like we heard this dude being like, bro, bro, it's Tion, bro. Yeah, yeah, this is my boy, I know him. Da, 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 da. Like, I swear to God, bro, yeah, it's my mates, blah, blah, blah. And me, it was dark, you know, it was out the front of a house and it was dark as, and this is North side, this wasn't my side, I'm South side. And I just heard this dude saying my name, bro. And my cousin's like, bro, he's talking about you, bro. I was like, no way. And so we walk up, cause my cousin's mates with him, they go to school. 
And my cousin's like, bro, who's this? What's this? What's this? And the dude goes, bro, this is fucking Tion, bro. Fucking da 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 And then my cousin's like, bro, this is Tion, bro. And then I was like, hey, bro, like that. And I saw he was like, oh, because he was just talking shit. He didn't know me, bro, but he's telling everyone he knew me. And and I just remember being like, what up, what up? And then everyone was like, like, we were laughing about it because we were like, my cousin was spinning out being like, bro, dude, like, you're like, f- not famous, but that was like a taste of fame. You know what I mean? People were like just talking sh- like good shit. You know, I know him, bro. My mate went to school with there, plays footy with there. And then, but it was all bullshit. So I remember being like, whoa, like, that's like the power of music, bro. That was like a taste of fame. Um, but yeah. And then so shortly after that, I actually ended up getting sent to Tonga. Like, because I, uh, I was being naughty in school. I was doing some silly shit. Um, again, just like any chance I could have people talking about me, you know what I mean? Like, that's that was... I was that kid, like if I was in school, I wouldn't be um I wouldn't be trying to learn, you know. I was causing drama, you know, like these as I said, Carlo comes to my school, school goes on lockdown, like everyone's like teachers freaking out, whatever. Um but yeah, I I was like I was like a little bit heartbroken at the time as well. I think I like the you know, I had a love interest or whatever. And then that girl ended up sort of falling in love with my cousin that I introduced her to. And then she was like, oh, him, whatever. And then I was just like, I sort of um, fucked out and just started being like, all right, I'm going to go even more wild at school. Um, And so, yeah, I ended up getting like just suspended heaps that year. But, yeah, I ended up... uh, sort of nearly burning the school down. I went to a school that was on bushland. Um, and so every class I'd go to, the teachers knew I wasn't learning, bro. They knew I wasn't there to learn. So they had the, every class I had in year 10, they had a desk for me at the back of the class. So the teachers up front, they had a desk at the back, facing the back wall where the clock was above. So I'd be there facing the back wall, just drawing, bro, just drawing. Um, Cause the teachers just didn't want to, they're like, he's here. He doesn't have to work. Um, but yeah, so I got like special treatment or whatever. Um, and then one day this teacher, like my science teacher got angry at me. Cause he was like, oh, you think you're better than everyone. You think you don't have to do schoolwork, blah, 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 blah. Um, and he pulled my drawing book because I, I was like drawing mad, like just island shit, tong- Tongan patterns and shit. And he pulled my book out, fucked my drawing up, and I, I lost it, bro. Like I kind of, I became a little bit uh, violent towards him. And then um, got in some trouble. I think I did, you know, I hurt another kid as well in that class. Um, and then I just legged it. Like, I was just like, fuck this, I'm gone. Like, caught the bus home. And then the, like the next day or the, the, like, I was just kept doing shit like that. And then I, I had a science, not a science test, math test or something, lit the test on fire. Cause I was like, I'm not, you just know I'm not doing this. Like, you, I know I'm at school, but like, I'm not here to do the tests and shit. And so I lit it on fire and this kid was like, oh, sir, you know, Tion's lighting the thing. And I was like, no, I'm not. Threw it out the window. School's on bushland. And then this fire starts, bro. And again, I go, oh, I got to get the fuck out of here. Like, this is bad. I remember the fire alarm's going off, like, big time, bro. Um, Because I saw this fire, like, actually started big. Um... And so I ended up just legging it and getting on the bus and going home again, bro. <laughs> so I was like, fuck this shit, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. Um, and the next day, so like they called my, I, at this point, my mum had kicked me out of my mum's house. So I had to go live with my dad. Um, and so I bus to my dad's, but they called my mum. So it was sweet. But then the next day I had to go in with my dad and then I'm sitting in the principal's office and the principal's saying like, like, oh, 
Tion started a fire that was, it was like 20 by 20 meters. It was like nearly killed people. Like all the teachers, hose, buckets, everything, uh, fucking fire, fire engine, fire trucks, whatever, come and um, put it out. And it was like actually a dangerous fire. And um, but yeah, like when I was leaving to get on the bus, I remember seeing all the kids go on the basketball court or the oval or some shit, just like doing the whole fire precaution. But yeah, so the next day, the principal's like, "Your son nearly like killed people." He said it however he said it, but my dad was like, you know, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, sort of like similar to like that fucking uh, Jonah Takalua shit when the dad's like, I'll discipline him. And the teacher's like, no, no, no. no. It's literally that exact scene. Um, and then so we're driving home and, and my dad's like laughing and I was like, and my dad's like, oh, you you think you're a fireman, eh? You think you're fire, you know, taking the piss out of me. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I could be a fireman if I want, whatever. And then my dad's like, I'm going to send you to Tonga. See if you're laughing in Tonga. You're not going to make it one day, one week in Tonga. That's what my dad said. And I remember being like, hey, yeah, send me. Send me to Tonga. Watch, like, watch me. I'll fucking, I'll run it. I'll run Tonga. You know, like, bro, just, just arrogant fucking whatever, you know. Um, so, yeah, because, like, bro, I, I always, I always wanted to, like, my whole life I kind of was seeking, like, appro approval from my old man, you know what I mean? Because my dad's Tongan and my mum's Australian. Um, but, yeah, so this was, like, the perfect chance, bro, because, like, I'll be playing rugby. And like, if I did something good, my dad would still just be like, whatever. Like to the point where I'd be like, all right, well, I'm gonna like high tackle some cunt then. You know what I mean? Like, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna do some bad shit then. Again, just like attention shit or whatever. But yeah, so I didn't even finish year 10 in Australia, bro. I didn't even finish it. My dad sent me to Tonga like a week or two later. Um, to go live with my grandma. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I lived in Tonga for uh, nearly nearly two years, a year and a half-ish. School in Tonga is it's still old school, you know, like they still got the blackboard. They don't have the whiteboards. They got the chalk. They still have corporal punishment, which is smacking. Like they still smack, bro which is crazy because I went there my first day of school, this teacher pulled this kid out for like graffitiing on his uniform because you wear the you wear the tupenu, which is like the sort of like a dress thing. And then you wear tawala, which is like a mat, uh, like a woven mat with your school colors. And this kid did like patterns on it. And then the teacher on the first day pulled him out and then told one of the prefects to snap a stick from the tree and then he, the kid snapped this stick, gave it to the teacher, and the teacher's like, turn around, come out, and started belting this kid with a stick, bro, on my first day of school. And I was like, whoa, this is gangster, bro. This is this is next level, bro. Um, and yeah, but so it's it's very old school, it's very alpha male. Um, like if you if you walk around with your head held high. Like you gotta be ready for someone to test you, you know? Like it's, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's probably some old school alpha male shit. It's a very alpha culture. The Pacific Islands is still, you know, still very, uh, gotta prove yourself. Um, and yeah, first day or first week or whatever, I was in school, bro, kids trying to take my fucking, kids are trying to take my sandals, bro. Kids are saying like, yeah, hey, give, give me sandals, give me sandals. They're speaking Tongan to me. I went there, I couldn't even understand what they were saying, bro. I just had to be like, what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? Hey, give me your sandal, give me your sandal. But bro, you're gonna have to take it from me. You're gonna have to take my sandals. And same with like the books and the pen, all this shit. So for the first like, maybe like three months of schooling there, I was getting 
like they, they were attempting to bully me, you know what I mean? They were attempting to like, like try and rob me and shit, bro. And I just remember I was like, no one here knows me. I've got nothing to lose, bro. Like it is what it is. So I'll pull the whole Australian card. Like I'll be like, bro, I'm from Australia, bro. Like what fuck, what kind? Like what, you're a fucking hectic here? Um, and yeah, I had to, uh, <laughs> I guess, defend myself a few times. I also had to do the opposite of defending yourself at times. Um, Cause yeah, this kid, I remember these kids took my book and shit. And they're fucking like, yeah, us, us, kota, kota, like just swearing at me, calling me fucking bitch and shit, whatever. And then, yeah, I was just like, I'll see you at lunchtime, cunt. <laughs> Sorry if I can't say that, but yeah. But anyways, long story short, like it was it was quite rough for those first three, three months, three to six months, because there's just always a, a bigger, badder dude, you know what I mean? But I wasn't I wasn't walking around like like I'm some mad cunt. Like, but I was walking around confident, like, yeah, I've done a little bit of boxing in Australia, PCYC, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not scared. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was rough, bro. It was, <laughs> it was rough. Um, but I think like five, six months into the school year, we had rugby, we had footy. And yeah, I... I obviously applied myself to rugby. Rugby union is the big one over there, um, but we played league as well. Um, and I guess when when they see that you're you're like you know all or nothing, um, they respect you a bit more. So when I started playing footy, like I would be trying to grass grass cut all the big boys and shit. You know, half the dudes don't even play with shoes, bro. Half them run around barefoot. Like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> but I got stories for hours of Tonga, bros. Uh, so yeah, I, I did get smacked in Tonga. Um, I thought it was funny. Uh, so if you don't do your homework or, you know, you whatever, anything that you get in trouble for in school, you get smacked over there for. So I would purposely not do my homework no, I'll do it, but I wouldn't bring it. And then I'll be like, this is going to be funny as, because if kids in my class will get smacked with the ruler, like, don't, 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 smack your legs and shit. And they'll be like, oh, oh, oh. Even the big boys would be like, oh, oh, oh kind of like scared and shit. And I thought it was so funny, because like, if you get smacked with a ruler or something, it doesn't really, it's, you get smacked with a big broomstick, that shit hurts. I would get smacked on the legs and and just be funny and be like, oh, hey. Just you know, like pretend it pretend it hurts. Um, but I got smacked mad once uh, when in one day I got um, I had a physical altercation with a dude that ended up being like my cousin. That our dads like grew up on the same little island, um, but we ended up punching on three times in one day. Because in the uh, before school he rushed me, in the hallway we went, and then in the hallway later that day he got me mad, bro, black eye, whatever, got me mad, um, but rushed me, bro, and it was like broken up, and he fucking smacked me, bro. But after school, the the vice principal, his name was Kefu, he called us to his like little office thing, and he was like, um. He's like, you you know, you are cousin, your father's go here, like just the relation or whatever. And I was like, no way, because this dude like had all the gold teeth. He was a big boy. Um, but I had beef with his mate like the day before, bro, the day before. Um, but yeah, anyways, his teacher made us stand there with our hands on the wall and he got the broomstick. I don't know if you've ever seen a Tongan broomstick, bro. It's thick as, and he just went, bang, and then he walked over, bang, smacked my cousin, and then bang, smacked us for like five minutes, bro. And we were both there just like, whoa, bro, whoa, what the hell? Like, first of all, we're cousins. And secondly, like, you get smacked for punching on, bro. Like, yeah, so it was funny as, and then I had a sore ass for the next day. Cause it does, it does hurt being here with like a hectic, 
hectic uh, smacking tool. But yeah, throughout the year, bro, even if you talk in assembly, you talk in assembly, bro, I was talking in assembly, teacher, bang, slap from the side, bro, dog shot, if you talk. So I learned not to talk in assembly. Um, and yeah, one time I saw this, this girl, something, I don't know, she didn't do her homework or something, and this big, this big gay teacher, Malakai, made her put her head like above the desk like that, that far from the desk, and he got like a real hectic, thick, hardcover book and went poof, like that, smacked her head, bro, just crying and shit. But it was just normal. And I seen another teacher bah, slap the shit out of another girl, like on the ovals, like on the, at lunchtime for talking back or something, bro. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty wild. <laughs> how, how do you think your experience in Tonga made you the person you are today? Well, uh, I guess with the music, so my, my grandpa on my dad's side, who I'm named after, um, he was a famous musician, but he, he passed away when I was young. Um, I never even got to meet him, uh, but he had instruments around the house, like 12 string guitars, guitars, ukuleles, whatever, banjos and shit. And I remember I was like, who, I can't play this shit, but I wanna play this shit. And then a few of my boys from school came, will come over and like show me how to play ukulele, guitar, 12 string guitar, which I, I'm still really bad at. Um, and I never really understood the banjo, but like, I kind of just built a confidence of like, oh, like I understand music, not theoretically, but just the feel of it, you know, like what chords sound right and feel right and what, you know, key you got to sing it in and shit. So when I got back from Tonga, like by the end of it, by the end of my, my stay, um, I didn't want to leave. Like I had like an accent kind of, like I remember I got back and my cousin's laughing at me. Um, but I didn't want to leave because I'd like adapted to like that real chill, chill lifestyle of not having much, like not having much at all. Sometimes it's like not much to eat, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was, so it was humbling. Uh, I came back to Australia, I was real skinny, like shredded, bro. And I just was like very grateful for really just everything. You know what I mean? Like I came back, I was like, fuck. We got food here, bro. Like we got we got a microwave that works, you know? Like, yeah, it's hectic. Cause bro, when I was living there, like I got I got food poisoning, bro, like pfft, like ten times. Proper food poisoning as well. Um, cause yeah, like our, our microwave broke and we just didn't get another one. So my grandma would like fry chicken and then the next day to reheat it fry it again, and then the next day, same thing, fry it again. By the fifth day, I'll be eating it, and then I'll go to school and I'm fucking spewing and shitting, bro, like full, just like, oh, 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 this, what's going on here? I'm like, bro, I, sometimes I felt like I was like dying, bro, like bad, but but we got through it, bro. <laughs> we got through it. But yeah, it just, it was definitely a very humbling experience and yeah, it's funny because when I was there, there was there was about another five or another five or six kids in my grade that got sent to Tonga, um, the same exact shit as me. But by the end of it, there was only like three three of us left that you know, well, one from New Zealand, one from Western Sydney, and me, you know, and everyone else flew back. One kid got his hand broke by a teacher smacking it with a with a piece of wood. He left and he was my mate. Um, and then, yeah, just so like a lot of kids didn't make it. Literally, maybe like six or seven kids. Yeah. But just humbling, bro. And John told me the first time you did drugs? First time I did drugs, I would have been in about year eight. 